weapon systems. It is imperative that we have complete knowledge of each and every component of a weapon, its effect on the working of the weapon, the various types of operating principles, and their effect on the design of a weapon system. We should also be in complete picture of all the mechanics that take place when round is fired, what causes stoppages, and recommend possible changes in the design or characteristics for better functioning of the weapon when they come for trials or use. The aim of the CPT is to acquaint you with the principles of automatic operations. In this CPT, we shall learn about the cycle of operations, safety in weapons and the operating mechanism. Cycle of operations The actions that take place after a round has been fired and before the next round can be fired constitute a cycle of operation. Since the actions take place in the same sequence and are repeated each time a round is fired, it is called a cycle. The following actions constitute a cycle of operations in 7.62mm self-loading rifle. Unlock, Extract, Eject, Cock, Feed, Load and Lock. 7.62mm LMG 2 follows the same cycle. In some weapons, the sequence of actions may change. Like in 5.56mm insas rifle, the action of cock takes place before eject. And in some weapons, a few actions may be omitted. For example, in 9mm submachine carbine, there is no locking and unlocking. The working of these actions that constitute the cycle of operations depends on the design of the weapon. As such, the weapons are classified into three major categories. Manual operated. The complete cycle of operations is carried out manually. For example, 303 rifle. Semi automatic weapons. In these weapons, the complete cycle of operations, except the operation of firing mechanism, takes place automatically. In these type of weapons, the trigger has to be pressed and released to fire every round. For example, 7.62mm SLR and 7.62mm Dragunov sniper rifle. Automatic weapons. In these weapons, the entire cycle of operations takes place automatically. On pressing the trigger, the rounds will be fired continuously till such time the pressure on the trigger is not released or the magazine gets empty. For example, 7.62 mm LMG and 9 mm submachine carbine. Safety in weapons. Safety in a weapon is basically required for two reasons. Firstly, safety of firer and safety of weapon. There are two types of safety which are incorporated in the design of a weapon. Applied safety and mechanical safety. Applied safety. This is applied by the firer himself. Example, safety catch or change lever. It is provided primarily to prevent accidental firing of a weapon. By changing the position of the safety catch or change lever to S, we obstruct the operation of firing mechanism and in some cases, the weapon will not fire even though there may be a round in the chamber. The other type of applied safety is trigger guard and grip safety. Grip safety is found in Uzi submachine gun. It has a protruding lug on the rear side of the pistol grip. When the firer obtains proper hold on the weapon, this lug gets pressed and it is only then that the firing mechanism becomes free to be operated. Mechanical safety 
it is an inbuilt mechanism incorporated in the design of the weapon to ensure that a round is not fired until it is fully supported in the chamber the support is not removed till such time safe pressure of 2 psi or 2 tons per square inch is achieved in the chamber this implies that the primer cap cannot be struck until the round is fully seated in the chamber some suitable device is employed to provide support to the base of round before the primer cap is initiated and finally a period of delay is incorporated to allow the pressure in the chamber to drop to a safe level before support is removed locking locking of weapon or breech block is an important facet employed in providing mechanical safety to a weapon the various types of locking are tilting block sliding breech block rotating bolt toggle joint lock projecting lug device tilting block in this type the breech block is tilted in such a manner that it gets locked up into the recess provided for it in the body of the weapon it is also ensured in the mechanical movement and design of the weapon that the weapon does not fire unless locking take place tilting block is of two types upward tilt of breech block downward tilt of breech block upward tilt of breech block during the final forward movement of the carrier group the piston cam lifts the breech block upwards into the locking recess provided in the body of the weapon and hence the breech block is locked example 7.62 mm lmg downward tilt of breech block during the final forward movement of the slide the rear portion of the slide pushes the breech block downwards into the locking recess provided in the body of the weapon and the breech block is locked example 7.62 mm sla sliding breech block in this case the breech block instead of moving back moves sideways when the round is loaded which is done manually the breech block is moved behind it and locked advantage of this is a shorter length of the gun that is the length of a round plus length of the breech block plus length of the compressed return spring rotating breech block in this type of locking mechanism after the feeding of the round the breech block rotates on its axis and the locking lug gets locked into the body recess provided in the weapon unlike the tilting breech block in which the locking is at the rear end of the breech block in case of rotating breech block locking takes place at the forward end of the breech block this has two advantages firstly the pressure acting in the rearward direction is not acting on complete breech block but is being stopped by the front portions of the breech block as a result the rear portion that is behind the locking lug does not need to be made heavy and the weapon is lighter secondly due to lighter breech block the back and forth movement of the operating mechanism is faster hence higher rate of fire example ak47 m16 assault rifle and 5.56 insas weapon systems toggle joint lock this locking mechanism is found in recoil operated weapons and works exactly like the seesaw wherein when one applies pressure on one side the other side moves up and vice versa the toggle joint facilitates locking of breech block with the barrel of the weapon projecting lug device in this locking mechanism a lug projects out from the breech block and lock the breech block with the weapon for unlocking the lug is retracted and thereafter the operating mechanism is free to move back example 0.30 browning machine gun and chinese lmg
chamber. The chamber provides support to the cartridge walls on their expansion when pressure is generated inside them. A chamber is designed to withstand pressure up to 60 psi. In new generation of weapons, example in SAR system, the chambers are being chrome plated which increases its life and requires less cleaning. The chambers are of three types, parallel, tapered and fluted and the rounds or the cartridges fired from it are similarly shaped. Parallel Chamber A parallel chamber is normally used in low pressure ammunition. It is ideally suited for blowback operated weapons to provide more friction and thereby delay in extraction. Example 9mm submachine carbine. Tapered Chamber The forward portion of the chamber is tapered. This facilitates easy extraction because only a portion of cartridge provides friction due to contact with chamber walls, that is the parallel portion. The tapered portion does not provide any friction during extraction. Example 5.56 mm in SARS weapon systems. Fluted chamber. There are longitudinal serrations cut into the chamber which end some distance from the chamber face. When a round is fired, a thin film of gas is formed between chamber and cartridge case and this helps in extraction. The end portion of chamber walls help in obtaining obturation. Example M16 assault rifle and G3 rifle. Obturation On firing of a round due to gas, the cartridge case expands readily and hugs the chamber wall. This phenomena is called obturation. Obturation prevents the rearward escape of gas, thus ensuring maximum gas is available to act on the bullet to have desired effect at the target end. Strong base of cartridge case. The cartridge case is not strong enough to withstand a pressure of 21 TSI on its own. On firing of a round, the cartridge case expands and the chamber walls provide support to the cartridge case. However, the rear portion of the cartridge case which is exposed outside the chamber has to be made strong enough to be able to withstand pressure of 21 TSI. Thus, the rear 1 by 8 of an inch of the cartridge case is made strong to withstand pressure up to 32 TSI. This differs in case of rimmed and rimless ammunition. Rimmed ammunition In rimmed ammunition, the diameter of the rim is more than the remaining cartridge or the rim protrudes outside. The protruding portion gets caught up with the chamber face and prevents further entry of cartridge into the chamber. Therefore, CHS in case of rimmed ammunition is the distance between the front face of breech block and the rim of the cartridge. Rimless Ammunition In rimless ammunition, the diameter of the rim is similar to the remaining cartridge. The tapered portion of the cartridge, on coming in contact with the tapered portion of the chamber, stops any further entry of the cartridge into the chamber. Therefore, in rimless ammunition, the CHS is the distance from the face of breech block up to the tapered portion where the cartridge rests. The center of the tapered portion is taken to measure the CHS. Ruptured case. When CHS is more than 1 by 8 of an inch or the gap between the chamber face and breech face is more, we have ruptured case. Due to the continuous hammering action of say a LMG breech face on the chamber face, the chamber face may get eroded and the gap or the CHS may increase. Once the round is fired, due to increased CHS or gap, the weaker portion of the cartridge is exposed outside the chamber and it bursts due to high pressure. The weapon has to be sent to the armorer or to the workshop and metal washers are fixed and CHS or gap is restored. It occurs towards the rear 1 by 3rd portion of the cartridge case. 
separated case. In separated case, the CHS or gap is as per requirement. But the metallurgy of the cartridge is weak. As a result, once the round is fired, the tensile strength of the metal is not enough to withstand the pressure generated and the cartridge breaks up due to shearing effect. It occurs towards the forward portion of the cartridge case and is also caused due to dirty chamber or ammunition. Stability of bullet in flight Spin stability In small arms, spin stability is provided to the bullet by rifling. The bullet rotates on its axis and the gyroscopic force acting on a bullet negate other external forces and therefore the bullet is stable. Thus better accuracy is achieved. Spin stabilized In muzzle loaded weapons, the stability to the round is provided by the fins. The ammunition which cannot be provided with spin, example 51mm motor ammunition, are provided with fins in the tail unit for stability during flight. Fin stabilization does not provide as much accuracy as spin stabilization. Barrel Barrel can withstand pressure up to 60 TSI. It is thicker towards chamber and thins out towards muzzle. This is done to reduce weight of the barrel. The barrel of the 7.62mm SLR and LMG is stellite lined, which is a kind of alloy. In Insar's weapon system, the barrel is chrome plated. It increases the life by 4 times and reduces maintenance also. The longer the barrel, up to a limit, the longer will be the duration for which the gas will act on the bullet, therefore more muzzle velocity. Rifling Longitudinal serrations cut all along the length of the barrel from the chamber end to muzzle end is called rifling. Pin is provided to the bullet with the help of rifling. The raised portions are called lands and the serrations are called grooves. Caliber The caliber of the weapon is measured from the diagrammatically opposite lands. In small arm weapons, the rifling is from left to right so that the bullet gets rightward twist or spin. Pitch The distance along the bore covered by rifling to complete one full turn or on travelling this distance the bullet completes one full turn on its axis is called pitch. Example in 7.62 mm LMG the pitch of rifling is 1 by 12 inch that is on travelling 12 inches along the bore, the bullet completes one complete turn on its axis. Driving edges In front of the chamber and at the commencement of rifling, we have driving edges. The driving edges help the bullet in getting inside the rifling. Setup When gas is produced in the cartridge case, the pressure and heat generated have a hammering effect on the base of the bullet due to which it expands that is the base only and hugs the lands and grooves thereby preventing any gas from escaping ahead of it in the barrel. This phenomena is called setup. Windage In muzzle loaded weapons to facilitate loading the outer diameter of the round or the bomb is less than the inner diameter of the barrel. This difference or the gap is called windage. Muzzle attachment. Any part attached in front end of the barrel is known as muzzle attachment. Some of the types of muzzle attachment are Flash hider. These were bulky funnel shaped attachments used to hide flash from the sides. Example 303 machine gun and older versions of weapons. Flash Eliminator These are slotted attachments fixed at the muzzle to reduce flash. 
The gas following the bullet escapes from the slots and thus helps in reducing flash considerably and also helps to reduce blast to a certain degree. The slots are always odd in numbers. This helps in regular vibrations as just below a slot will be a metal stick which negates any biased vibration onto one side because of the escaping gas. Example 7.62 mm SLR and LNG has 3 slots and in 7.62 mm Dragnaut sniper rifle there are 5 slots. The INSAR system of weapons have holes facing outwards which are angled towards front. This has been provided to ensure that all the gas acts in the front direction and on the tube launching when it is fixed onto the barrel to fire a grenade. Muzzle Brake This is used in recoil operated weapons but it functions opposite to that of an intensifier. The muzzle brake is used to reduce recoil force. The muzzle attachment traps the gas following the bullet in such a way that they act in the forward direction. That is, it push the barrel forward and thereby reduce the recoil force. Example, AK-74 of Russia. Compensator A strip of metal attached at the muzzle end to compensate for throw-off in certain weapons. In AK-47, there is a throw-off in the 1 to 2 o'clock direction. To negate this, a compensator has been used in the 7 o'clock direction. When the gas comes out of the barrel, it applies pressure on the strip in the 7 o'clock direction. Thus, negates the throw-off. Recoil Intensifier This is a muzzle attachment which helps in intensifying the recoil force. The gas following the bullet in the barrel is trapped by the recoil intensifier in such a way that the gas acts in the rearward direction thereby increasing the recoil force. It is used in recoil operated weapons example machine gun 3 general purpose machine gun of Germany. Silencer The muzzle attachment attached to the muzzle to reduce blast. The silencer has holes in them when the bullet passes through it the gas following the bullet escapes or get trapped in these holes. As a result, when the bullet exits the muzzle end, there is hardly any gas following it. Thus, the blast produced is negligible or muffled. Silencer affects the muzzle velocity and range. In 9mm carbine machine 2 alpha, there are 78 holes of 1.5mm diameter drilled in the barrel all along after a distance of 75mm from the chamber end. There are plastic cones inside. When the bullet travels inside the barrel, the gas following it is dissipated and hence reduces blast. Extractor An extractor is primarily required for extraction of the fired case, but it also holds on to the rim of the cartridge case during loading action. Extractor is located on the front face of the breech block and it is of two types, single piece and multi piece. Single piece In single piece extractor, there is one piece of spring steel attached at two points. Multi piece It is the most common type of extractor and the spring and extractor are two different components. Extractors are required to be strong but small and this contradiction in requirement leads to breakages. As a result, spares of this are always provided. Ejector Ejectors are required to eject the fired cases out of the weapon. It is an obstruction placed on the rearward path of the fired case, on contacting which it gets released or pushed out of the extractor and ejected through the ejection slot. The ejector is always placed opposite to the ejection slot. Ejectors are of three types, namely fixed type, rocking type and push rod type. Fixed type The fixed ejector is placed on the rearward path of the fired case. At the point where the case is opposite an opening in the body of the weapon, its base hits the fixed ejector on the far side from the opening and is forced out through it, pivoting on the extractor. The examples are 
7.62 mm SLR and 9 mm submachine carbine. Rocking type. A rocking type of ejector is pivoted at the center. As the breech block runs back, a projection hits the rear end of the ejector, causing the front end of the ejector to pivot out and strike the side of the empty case. It is a less violent method than fixed ejection and reduces the chances of distorting the case and so leading to a stoppage. This type of ejector is used in recoil operated weapons. Push rod type. The push rod type of ejector acts in some ways like fixed ejector. However, the push rod is generally buffered and so is less violent than a fixed ejector. The example is 7.62 mm medium machine gun. Ejectors though small are vital components since their failure would result in a weapon stoppage. As they have to sustain seaway forces, they have to be carefully designed or buffered to cope with the shocks involved. But the main aim of providing the butt is to help the farer support the weapon on his shoulder. The butt can either be fixed or foldable. The butt is given angle to break up the recoil force and is called angular butt. The recoil force acting backwards get distributed into two parts. One part continuing backwards along the plane of the weapon and the other moving along the angled butt. Thus reduced recoil force felt by the farer. However, this leads to turning movement in the weapon and affects the accuracy. The effect of turning movement can be reduced by having a straight butt as it is there in M16 assault rifle. However, due to straight butt, the sights have to be mounted higher and they have to be sturdy to withstand any breakages. The effect of the recoil force is reduced by having good furniture of the weapon. In the latest design of weapons that is bullpup, the butt is made hollow and the operating mechanism moves into the hollow butt thus reducing the length of the weapon. For example, 5.56 mm Steyr rifle of Austria. The butt also houses the return spring and helps in pushing the moving parts forward. There is a butt trap which houses the cleaning material and oil bottle. Return spring. This is an ordinary spring which is housed in a tube in the butt. The spring can be in two parts like in the case of 9mm submachine carbine. The main function of this spring is to push the moving part forward. The strength of the return spring is worked out as per the weight of the moving parts and whether the weapon is open or closed breech. If we put a weak return spring, it may not have enough energy to push the moving parts forward to complete the feeding and loading. On the other hand, a very strong return spring will push the moving parts with lots of energy causing inaccuracy and wear and tear of the weapon. So a balance has to be worked out. The potential energy stored by the 7.62 mm SLR is 12 to 14 pounds per feet and that by the LMG is 18 pounds per feet. Sighting systems. In small arms, the accurate alignment of the barrel with the line of sight to the target is achieved with the simple direct sighting systems and thus it is an essential part of a small arm system. There are four main types of sights, open sight, telescopic sights, night sights and collimator sights. Open sights. Open sights or iron sights are cheap and simple. It has two major components, backside and foresight. Backsight. There are two types of backsights, aperture type and U or V type. U or V type. They are prone to error as it is difficult to get correct sight alignment. The great advantage of U or V type of sight is that it can be brought into the aim more quickly than other types of sight since there is no interference with observation of the target while the weapon is raised to eye level. Example AK-47 rifle and 7.62mm Dragnop sniper rifle. Aperture type The aperture backside cannot be quite so quick to use because of the material round the aperture which obscures the target momentarily. 
while the weapon is raised to eye level. However, it is the tendency of a human eye to find the center of a circular thing. As a result, the error in alignment is less and the accuracy achieved is greater. Example 5.56 mm in SAS weapon system. Foresight Foresights are mainly of two types pole or post type and blade type. Pole type They are less sturdy and the minutest correction can be given. However, they are inaccurate in bright or less light. Example 5.56 mm in SAS rifle. Blade type they are sturdy and the minimum correction that can be given is half or one rotation. In comparison to pole type, the accuracy achieved in bright or less light is more. Telescopic Sights In a telescopic sight, the lenses present the target and the aiming mark in the same plane to the eye. This ability in effect to focus foresight, backside and target all at once brings a consequent reduction in the potential errors. In addition, the telescopic sights offer magnification, which allows small and indistinct targets and particularly those in poor light to be engaged more effectively. Moreover, they also provide judging distance and lead facility for moving targets and wind. Night sights Night sights are of two types, passive night sight and active night sight. Passive night sight. It is only a receiver. It requires a source at the target end to be effective. Example, image intensifier. It uses ambient light over the target and thermal imager. It uses heat emitted by the target. Active night sight. It has its own source which emits certain rays and are bounced back from the target. Example, infrared. It releases infrared beams which bounce back from the target and is received by the device. Collimator sights. These are optical sights with unity magnification. The foresight and backsight are coupled together and a small dot is provided which has to be aligned to the center of the target, hence easier aiming. Moreover, the eyes are set to surroundings as there is no need to reorient as is the case in telescopic sights. However, they are fragile and are not much advantageous in engaging targets at longer ranges. Collimator sights are recommended for the bullpup design of weapons.